Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Talk on Nevada. I'm your host, Andy Matthews. Well, Nevada legislator just passed the largest tax increases in state history, but some say that the revenue structure is still broken. What's going on here? Here to help us sort all this out is Jeff Lawrence, a fiscal policy analyst at the Nevada Policy Research Institute. Jeff, welcome. Thanks. Good to be here, Andy. Jeff, you've written this week about the uh, Interim Finance Committee. Before we kind of get into what's going on with this, uh, for those who don't know, what is the IFC? Well, the Interim Finance Committee is a joint committee uh, between the Senate Finance and the Assembly Ways and Means Committee. That they meet together uh, uh, in between legislative sessions, uh, and their charge, uh, their primary task are, uh, that they're charged with is to uh, allocate uh, contingency funds uh, to state agencies that have cost overruns, specifically for things like uh, utilities. If you know if their utility bill goes higher, then the IFC can allocate more funds towards them. Why is the IFC getting together? now this time okay uh, the ifc right now is meeting for a completely different purpose uh a task that they've charged themselves with now is to uh is to finance a an interim study that would be a comprehensive uh a comprehensive study of the state tax structure uh looking at state and local taxes uh, on how they're intertwined and uh, it's taken the guise of uh pr promoting greater stability of the tax structure, uh, but this is really red herring uh, because it's actually, the purpose of the tax study is, uh, is to give them a rationale to implement uh, new taxes and it would be a broad-based business tax. Uh, Senator Horsford, who is a very powerful member of the, he's of the Interim Finance Committee, he's also the Senate Majority Leader, uh, actually sponsored a bill during the session uh, that, uh, that, that was similar and that it would have, uh, uh, it would have required the same type of tax study, but it actually used the used the words uh, explicitly that uh, it, it would require the implementation of a uh, net profits tax or a corporate income tax, so some type of broad-based business tax. So th there should be no confusion that this is the real purpose of the tax study is to implement some type of broad-based business tax. Uh, is there a case to be made, though, that Nevada's tax base is unstable and it's volatile and that we ought to be looking at um, how we can start to address that problem and bring more stability to Nevada's tax base? What's the problem with that? Well, that, that's the argument that is made by legislative leadership right now. Uh, although you know that too is red herring because uh, corporate income tax is the single most volatile uh, is the single most volatile tax that states use across the country. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of, uh, of Kansas City recently did a study that showed that the corporate uh, corporate income tax, for example, is more than twice as volatile as the general sales tax. Uh, so when you're adding in a tax that's even more volatile than any tax you already have, you can't really make the claim that it's about revenue stabilization because it's now becoming more volatile. Anybody who understands how averages work uh, understand that what, when you put in something uh, you know, on the high end, it's going to pull the average up that, that way. Uh, so it will make the overall tax revenue structure uh, even more volatile than it is now. Well, Jeff, you've also written um, that there are actually some controversies over how this tax study came to be or how it's being funded to begin with. Talk a little bit about that. Well, this is uh, perhaps the most egregious part of, the, of you know, this whole event. Uh, this, uh, the, the tax study that they're trying to commission right now, the, they recently put out the request for proposals. Uh, so they're soliciting bids for, from third-party uh, third contractors who would perform the study for them. Uh, but the funding for the study was vetoed by the governor and it was never overridden by the legislature. Uh, so th there was, uh, uh, according to the prescribed constitutional process, there should be no funding for the study. Uh, what, what, the, what the Interim Finance Committee has done is uh, they've, uh, they've committed to pledge contingency funds that are met to uh, allocate to those state agencies for you know, specific cost overruns like utilities, things like that. Uh, now they're basically using it as a legislative slush fund uh, to fund what was rejected uh, according to the constitutional procedures. Uh, so there's a serious case to be made that this is uh, you know, outside of the legal framework. It's an you know, extra legal funding that, that, they're, uh, that they're using right now. Speaking of the Constitution, uh, you've actually opined in the past that uh, the IFC itself actually raises some serious constitutional questions. What are some of those? Well, it's not simply my opinion, Andy. Uh, th there are people across the state who recognize that there may be a legitimate constitutional question about 
whether the Interim Finance Committee is a legal body itself. Uh, Governor Gibbons recently raised that question uh, when there was a dispute over his ability to create uh, someone within his office to oversee stimulus funds. Uh, the Interim Finance Committee challenged him uh, in that regard, and uh, he challenged them right back, saying that uh, they don't have the, the authority to exist, and if they want to challenge him, they have to prove that they have the authority to exist. And as a result, they backed off, uh, because they recognize, as, as they recognize as well as he does, that they likely, that, they, that a uh, court would likely find that they are an unconstitutional body. Uh, so basically what we're seeing with this tax study is that you've got a, a body that's likely unconstitutional using unconstitutional means to finance a study that was rejected according to the constitutional process. All right, Jeff, it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. Please keep us posted. I want to thank all of you for joining us this week on Talk on Nevada. I want to urge you to check us out on the web, npri.org, for more information on this topic and other private solutions to public challenges facing our silver state. I want to remind you, one week to go, NPRI's 18th anniversary celebration, September 23rd at the Venetian. Carl Rove will be our keynote speaker. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.